In this video, we'll see what AppRate Cloud is and why AppRate Cloud can be used as an amazing backend if you have your frontend ready. You don't have to invest your time developing backend from scratch and AppRate is storing and managing all your data on the cloud. How amazing is that? So we'll now move on to a computer screen and we'll see how to build a blog using AppRate Cloud Let's get started. All right, guys. So here I am inside my computer screen and we'll look into AppRite Cloud. AppRite.io. So let's go to AppRite.io and we'll go to AppRite Cloud to build something amazing. So I'm assuming that my front end is ready. So I'll only be creating back end. Let's go to Next.js. Next.js, create next app. Yes, I want to use Next.js and let's search for Tailwind templates. Tailwind templates, but before we use these Tailwind CSS templates, uh, let's create a new next app. Okay, so let's run this command. We'll be running this command and I'll fire a terminal here. npx create next app latest. And yes, I want to proceed. I'll say app write blog and let me call it app write loud blog just to make sure that what I'm creating is descriptive. No, I don't want uh, ESLint. Yes, I want Tailwind CSS. Do we need an SRC directory? No, uh, let's not use an SRC directory. Yes, I want to use app router. And would you like to customize the default alias? No, let's wait for it to install everything. And once everything is installed, we'll come back and we'll run our app. But in the meantime, let's log into AppRite so that we can get started by creating a backend. So basically AppRite is backend as a service. I already have an account on AppRite. If you don't have an account, you can create one, but make sure that uh, you are doing whatever I'm doing as is because I'll be following some steps. And if you don't follow them as is, you might be in trouble. So let's create a new organization. I'll say, Code with Harry. So the very first step for you is to create an organization. I'm creating an organization called Code with Harry. And now I'll click on organization ID. Uh, AppRite basically uh, generates one automatically, but if you want to add in some new ID, you can uh, add a unique ID and uh, let's select a plan. You can always start for free. If you go to AppRite.io, uh, one thing that I like about them is that you get unlimited projects free of cost with 10 GB of bandwidth and 2 GB of storage. 2 GB is a lot uh, to get started. And if you are making anything serious, you can always upgrade. So we have created this organization and let's create a new project. I want to call this blog and let's name our blog as hunting coder. So hunting coder is the name of the blog that I want to choose. And it is asking me uh, for a region to deploy. I can use Bangalore because I'm in India, but uh, the thing is that they don't have one at this point. And I can always click on notify me whenever this region is available. Let's go for Frankfurt because this only seems to be the region which is available. Now we have hunting coder project created. Uh, it is asking me for a platform, choose a platform. Which platform do you want to choose? And I'll click on web and uh, I will uh, register my host name. I'll say local PC and this is the name of my host name. I'll say localhost. You can always choose your domain or versal.app or gitpod.io, whatever you are using. Let's click on next. And this is something that we need to install because AppRide provides you with a package which you can use to connect to their backend. So where is our blog project? Here is the blog. Let's open this in VS code. And let's fire our terminal and uh, let's say npm install app right so that we have app right installed i'll say npm run dev which will start the dev server and this is how our next js app is looking at this point so it's still building it yes this is how our next js app is looking at this point definitely we'll want to use uh, something to fill this template and we want to remove all of this boilerplate code but let's get started by going to the app directory and then page.js and we will be removing this main tag and let me replace it with dev and I'll say JSX JavaScript react and let's write now bar is here. Okay. And let's also remove all the global CSS except the tailwind CSS. And let's see how our code is looking at this point. So this is how our code is looking at this point. It looks pretty good. Let's use app right now. So if you come back to this page, they have 
all the instructions npm install app right we have already done that now this is how you import app right in web sdk we'll copy this code we'll say next and this is how you create a new client so uh, let's import the client first so on our page we'll say import client as uh, import client from app right and then we'll copy this code and this contains all the things that we need so it's creating a new client for me let's create a new client inside this function and let's do format document and i'll click on next and you are ready to go congratulations on adding the first platform to your project now i can always add more platforms to my project it's up to me it's my choice i can go for flutter i can even go for some other platform same app same project some other platform so that we can connect to the same backend now let's go to dashboard if you don't know why we are using app right loud uh, the primary reason is that it takes all the hassle uh, out of your code the, the meaning of this thing is that you are writing a backend you don't have to worry about anything like authentication you don't have to worry about storage and uh, with app right loud they are bringing a lot of innovation uh, which is something that i like about them uh, authentication is their database is their storage is their function is game changing i'll tell you what functions are and they are also coming up with real time stuff so that you can create chat apps plus when you use authentication you can use google authentication github authentication apple microsoft uh, which means that people can come with their google account and sign up to your app you don't have to write authentication from scratch okay and you, you don't have to worry about any problem that you might face after writing authentications because security has to be taken seriously okay so let's come back to our app and uh, let's see uh, what we get at this point so uh, the very first thing that i want to uh, cover is auth so let's create a new user and let's uh, name this user as harry harry at code with harry.com and um, i'll simply put some phone number and let's choose the password as harry so it is asking me to choose a strong password i'll be choosing a stronger password and i'll hit create it says that invalid phone phone number must start with a plus okay we'll add a plus nine one and this is the phone number of the user and let's click on create and uh, this is a username this is the password i don't want to update it but uh, this is uh, how you can create a new user now this user is unverified you can always verify this account and uh, you can do this programmatically as well but uh, let's not add any more labels and let's not uh, play around with this user you can always add a label called admin or premium or some other label uh, you can add all those labels programmatically now let's come back to database and let's create a database so the database is going to be blogs because this is going to be our blog we'll give the task of adding a random id to app right and we'll hit create and the blogs has been created which is simply a database let's add a new collection called blogs so this is how we can create a new collection and inside our blocks database we have a blocks collection and here will be some documents you can always specify a schema and you can go back to documentation which will tell you about how you can use this but at this point i just want to make sure that uh, i have a blog uh, inside my uh, blocks collection so let's create a new document we'll create an attribute we'll say uh, let's create an attribute called string the key is going to be title so this is a title and uh, can be say 200 characters default is uh, let's not have a default value yes it is required and we'll create it so everything that you want to create will be here let's create another attribute and this is going to be a blog html blog html and size is going to be 2000 characters uh, or rather let's make it 5000 or 8000 characters because i want to make sure that i have plenty of space for blog and this is going to be required and we'll create another attribute and we'll see if we have anything else now let's add a date time field and uh it will be created at created at and we can uh, make it null and default value can be null and we'll hit create okay and we have uh, the title of the blog we have the content of the blog now let's add an author we can say author uh, we can also say email or url let's add something like url because this is going to be the slug and default value is uh, null and it, this should be required let's hit create 
what else do we have in a blog we have written by which is a user or we can also have a relationship with user like which user has written this blog but i'll keep it simple uh, and instead of creating a relationship i can simply add user as a string so we'll say user and size can be uh, 20 characters or 30 characters should be fine and uh, let's keep it required or we can also keep it null because we always don't have to mention which user has written it and this is a basic collection let's add a new document now and whenever we add a new document and this type of form will be shown to us so title of this blog is going to be javascript tutorials let us say and uh, blog html can be uh, say paragraph uh, javascript is a programming language and uh, let's close this paragraph you can also use markdown but i'm not using markdown at this point and created at can be today's date you can say today and a slug can be js tutorial and user can be say harry uh, note that user is a string not a relation let's click on next and it says please enter a url so uh, slug is basically uh, the url is basically not slug uh, so let's do one thing let's go back to attributes and delete this url because uh, I need a slug, not URL. Uh, so let's create an attribute and I'll select string and I'll say slug size can be 30 characters or maybe 100 characters because uh, slug can be a long one as well. Required, create uh, documents, create a document, title can be JavaScript tutorial and uh, HTML can be this is JS tutorial and this is the paragraph and let's say it created at and then user is going to be harry h a r r y harry and js tutorial for beginners and let's hit next and document security is disabled if you want to assign document permissions navigate to collection setting and enable document security otherwise only collection permissions will be used okay so uh, let's hit on create but in case you want to restrict this document or all the documents that we create here to specific users you can always go to settings and then permissions and you can hit this plus and you can say all guests can read but not update and you can say all users all the users which are created they can say uh, create and also read okay so let's update this uh, and once we have done this we can enable document security also so when document security is enabled users will be able to access document for which they have been granted either document or collection permission so if you want to enable security at a document level you can go for document security but at this point i'm not uh, enabling document security i'm disabling it let's come back to documents and uh, we have only one document at this point now let's come back to uh, the docs and let's see how we can access the documents so this is how you can access the document so uh, we'll have to enter our project id uh, this is the javascript code uh, which will help us get all the documents uh, or uh, say blocks in our case so let's copy this code databases is equal to new databases client so we have the project id we have this part set up now let's copy this code and i'll put it inside use effect so we are using react so we'll simply go uh, and say use effect use effect snippet and inside the use effect i will fetch all the blogs so this is how we can fetch all the blogs cons promise is equal to document dot create document databases dot create document now we'll have to import databases as well so we will import databases and id so let's import databases and ids as well and uh, we'll copy the database id and collection id here so let's go back to our app right and we can copy this uh, collection id so collection id should come here and then let's copy the database id as well so database id is here so this is our database we have copied the database id and let's paste the database id here and the same goes for this promise so promise is equal to this and promise dot then this let's see what happens so it says use effect is not defined we'll have to import use effect so import use effect from react does it work should work should work 
should work you are importing a component that needs okay so we'll have to create this as a client component so use client for client component and this should work now this should work please work so it doesn't work it seems says databases is not defined why is database is not defined i think we'll have to create a new database from client so databases is equal to new databases client yeah it works now so let's come back to our console and let's see if we are getting any documents it says app right exception the document data is missing try again with document data populated so document data is missing and we'll have to see why this is happening so inside our database we have this collection and inside this collection we have this document but it says that this document is not available uh, so document security is disabled which is good uh, this is the document data and uh, we have no activity on this document let's see why is it not fetching all the documents okay so the problem is that we are trying to create a document we don't have to create a document we have to fetch all the documents and in order to fetch all the documents we will come back to this list document and documentation and this is going to be the query so let's copy this query and let, let's paste it here so we'll say promise is equal to databases dot list documents and we'll use the database id and we'll use the same database id and collection id so let's control x here let's cut it and query dot equal and we'll say slug or let's say uh, let's leave it empty so i want to fetch all the documents and i want to make sure that all the documents are fetched and yes all the documents are being fetched so all the documents are being fetched so we have only one document and javascript tutorial this is js tutorial let's add some more documents okay so we'll come back to our uh, backend and let's click on create document and we'll say this is going to be say python tutorial python tutorial python tutorial and blog html can be uh, i'll go to chat gpt i'll go to chat gpt to fill in this data and i'll say generate uh, a dummy document with title uh, html content and then i'll say date and uh, what else slug okay mm, and yes it is generating it is generating some dummy document for me okay so i don't like it actually i don't know why so it is adding the header title is there section is there so let's copy this and let's add it to blog html and created it can be today and this can be python tutorial sorry and user can be harry and i'll click on next and i'll create this then let's create another document i'll say uh, jquery tutorial so likewise we can add even more documents and we can create a ui and display all the documents using our ui so let's do one thing let's create a state here so i'll import use state from react use state and uh, let's create a state called blocks so i'll say use state snippet and i will say blocks set blocks is equal to an empty array okay and we'll say promise dot then and uh, after getting the response we'll say uh, let's uh, change the response uh, sorry let's change the blocks and set the blocks as the response which is going to be an array dot documents and i want to make sure that the response dot documents is an array and yes it is an array so response dot documents is an array and we'll display all the blocks and in order to display a navbar here we will create a component called navbar so let's create a folder called components and inside the components we'll have a navbar.js and let's go to chat gpt and i'm going to tell chat gpt that please generate a navbar using html css uh, sorry html and tailwind okay and it will give me a jsx navbar but it, it's not giving me a jsx navbar i don't know why but uh, i think that should be fine because uh, rafce and this is the navbar let's remove this comment let's remove this one we'll say hunting coder 
hunting coder and let's import the navbar here so navbar let's import navbar first import navbar import navbar from components navbar and let's say we want to insert the navbar here and a navbar is here and chat gpt has generated a nice navbar and yeah it's looking good on mobile as well so this is our navbar let's say uh, let's say uh, create a block page showing all the blocks in similar color schemes scheme using jsx uh, at the starting of the video i told you that i'm assuming that ui is already created so i have other ui videos in case you want uh, to watch ui videos but this is how we can say blogs dot map and this is this is amazing i mean let's copy this and i'll show you why i'm calling it so amazing so after navbar after navbar i'm going to say blogs dot map and blog is going to have a title and it has blog html i guess yeah it's called blog html inside our documents yeah it's, it's called blog html so let's call uh, call it blog html blog html and is it displaying the blog html yeah but this is not how it's going to work uh, let's add another attribute in the blog or we can always parse the blog html convert it to text and then take some part of that text we can do that as well but uh, let's see how this is looking and we can add a read more button generate a read more button so this is how a read more button is going to look like read more button uh, and it is adding a read more button to the same thing let's copy the button and let's paste the button here and uh, we are living in an ai era guys so uh, do not hesitate to use ai we should be using ai whenever we can and now i'll say generate a blog page in a similar color scheme generate a generate a blog page using similar color scheme taking slug as slug in the url let's see if it can understand this otherwise we'll have to uh, create it on our own and it is using react router dom uh, i want to use next.js but let's tell it that i want to use let's stop it and we'll say i am using next.js i'm using next.js url i am using next.js so it is not going to use react router dom now so we'll create a file called slug.js inside pages directory but uh, we are not using pages directory we are using app directory so inside app directory we can create a folder called slug and inside slug we can say page.js and inside this page.js we can do the same thing let's copy this code and let's paste this code and it is using server side props i don't want to use server side props rather uh, this is going to be a server component next.js has changed we are on version 14 if i'm not wrong yes we are on version 14 of next.js now and version 14 of next.js has different ways of doing things i'll show you what those ways are so inside this server component will fetch all the data so whatever we are doing inside of get server side props we are going to do that here and once we have done it which means that we are on the server once we have done it uh, we have all the content so we have the blog data and we can fetch it using app right uh, and obviously we are going to fetch it using app right but let's let's remove this for now and we'll simply display the slug so we'll say just display the slug here and we'll fix it later we'll fix it later so slug slug and let's remove this get server side props and if i go to say localo slash something it should show me something it says params is not defined why 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 params is not defined slug is equal to params uh, slug is equal to params so title and content are in the props uh, slug should be in the params okay so either we can say params here or we can simply add slug here to get the slug and how do i know this i've read the documentation you can also read the documentation 
and if I reload this, we, we are getting the page, but not sure why it is not rendering properly. So we are getting slash something here, but why is this something not getting rendered here? Uh, it's still something that I cannot understand. Let's try to type something. So if I try to type something, it is coming, but this thing is not working. So I'll have to see why. Okay, so we don't have any slug. We don't have any slug. The slug is empty. So when I say slug, we don't have any slug, which means that nothing is being rendered. So if I say the slug and if I say content here, here, uh, there, okay. Uh, so I've written something wrong. So this is how our page is going to render, but it is not rendering properly because a uh, slug is not coming properly. So let's see how I will get the slug. So, so we have app slash blog slash slug and then page.js and then params.slug. Okay, so I'll have to do something like this. So I'll say params and inside the params will be the slug. So this is how it is going to work. So the slug something content here, let's add the nav bar as well. So um, we'll wrap it inside the anchor tags and I'll add a nav bar. So import nav bar, import, import nav bar and Let's wrap it inside uh, inside these uh, anchor brackets. And yeah, this is our blog. So the home page of our blog is going to look something like this. And we can always say slash blog post slash slug. So I can move this slug inside a folder called blog post. Okay. Th that is that is up to me. I can either do that or uh, uh, in fact, let's do it. So let's go to app and inside app we can create a folder called blog post new folder blog post and let's move this to this luck to blog post and now if i go to slash blog post slash something it will be displayed like this okay now let's refine the page so i've added something uh the slug and all those text let's remove all these texts and here should be the title of the document and here should be the content of the document and if i need any other information uh, of the document i can add it here okay let's come back to this page and uh, we can add a link tag so we can import link from next link so let's import link from next link and we'll say that so we'll say that link href is equal to something and let's add the title so whenever somebody clicks on the title they should be redirected to this page so href should be equal to the slash blog post so let's add a template literal so i'll say slash blog post slash blog post and slash blog dot slug and this will be the slug of the blog Okay, so whenever somebody clicks on the, let's go back. And whenever somebody clicks on this title, they should be directed to the blog. And yeah, they are being directed to the blog. Now, all we need to do here is that we need to convert this to text. So in order to convert HTML to text, we will simply create a function and uh, we can ask chart GBD to create it. So write a function to convert html string to plain string and it has given me a function and i'm going to use this function so let's copy this function and let's put this function right after our use effect and html to plain and i'll say html to plain control x html to plain text and i'll give blog.html and it is giving me the text now and i can always get first few characters maybe first 20 characters so plain text dot trim return plain text dot trim and let's take only 10 characters so i'll have to do dot sub str dot sub string 0 to say 20 characters and then i can include a triple dot i can include a triple dot and you can always do all those things if there are if there are any more characters than 20 characters you will add triple dot otherwise you will not add triple dots you can do all those things 
but I'll keep it really very simple. But let's add some more characters to this. I'll make it 50 maybe because uh, 20 looks too less. So I've added 50. This is JS tutorial. Whenever somebody clicks on the JS tutorial, they should be directed to the JS tutorial. And the nav bar should also direct to slash when clicked. And let's change this to a link. We'll change this to a link. Import link from next link import link from next link yes so whenever somebody clicks on hunting coder they should be directed to this page then javascript and then python tutorial yes so AppRite is basically fetching all the documents and let me remove this as df as df why is it not being removed i will have to check so where is this as df as df i have written as df as df somewhere and this is on the slug page stf stf why is it not going stf stf why is it coming here let's search for this string so it it is inside page dot js of blog post okay so it is inside this page dot js of blog post let's remove this and do I have a page.js inside slug? Oh, I by I mistakenly copied this instead of cutting. So I'll have to delete this slug. So let's delete this slug because I have it inside blog post. And yeah, it should work now. So now the next step is going to be fetch the correct title using slug and populate the blog post. Let's go. So we'll come back to the app right documentation and we are going to fetch a new document. In fact, we are going to fetch using a query and we are going to say slug equals this. So let's copy this code and we'll say query dot equal and we'll say slug should be equal to this. So uh, let's get everything from here. We are going to import client database ID from app, right? And then we are going to get all this. We are going to get all this code right back here and Let's create it as a client component. But before we create this as a client component, we will have to fetch this document on the server side. In fact, we don't even have to fetch this from the server side. It is going to run on client. Uh, let's copy this. We have copied this promise is equal to this. Uh, let's remove this. And this time we are going to say query dot equals and we'll say slug should be equal to slug. Okay, slug should be equal to slug. Query dot equal slug should be equal to slug. And we are going to get the promise. And then we'll say whenever this promise resolves, whenever this promise resolves, we should get, we should get the document. So whenever the promise resolves, we should get the document. And let's remove this. We are going to get the response once the promise resolves. So let's reload this page. Now again, there is some syntax error, it seems. What is the syntax error? I cannot spot the syntax error. Okay, so there there is an error in some opening closing tag, it seems. So promise dot, okay, promise is equal to this. Okay, so we have a use effect here. Let's remove this use effect. Uh, but if I remove this use effect, everything is happening on the server. Uh, which should be fine. I mean, even if it's happening on the server, this should be fine. So if I reload, it says use state is not defined. So let's remove use state. Where is use state? Where is use state? So I have use state somewhere. Use state. Okay. Let's remove this. And now it should load. It says query is not defined. So we are going to import query from app, right? Query. And yeah, it works. But we have some hydration error. We'll ignore it. We'll change class to class name soon. But let's see if we are getting this block printed or not. So we are not getting this response printed. And it should be printed inside uh, our terminal. So let's open our server side terminal. And yeah, it is being updated here as you can see. So if we say response.documents documents so if it's a response dot documents response dot documents it should print only the document so we have the user we have the slug we have the title we have everything so let's do one thing so response dot document zero is going to be that document 
Now, can we pass this response dot document zero here? So can we pass this somewhere here? Yeah, we can actually pass it. How do we do that? We'll have to create this as a client component and then we'll run this inside use effect. So let's do it. So let's say, uh, use client, use client and let's wrap it inside use effect snippet use effect snippet and let's wrap this entire thing inside use effect snippet format document and response dot documents will now come to our this console so it says use effect is not defined import use effect from react and and yeah we have this document here so all we need to do now is we'll say use state snippet and we'll call it blog blog not blog post so blog set blog is going to be null which is going to be uh, undefined blog is undefined initially not null it is going to be undefined initially and then we are going to right click format document and then we are going to simply get the blog dot title and blog dot dot blog html populated here so we are going to say set blog response dot document zero this will update the title of the blog and let's reload this page and see if everything is working no it says use state is not defined okay so blog dot title undefined cannot read state title or undefined so we'll say question mark dot and yeah so the slug javascript tutorial this is javascript tutorial and let's use dangerously set in our html so we'll say dangerously set in our html is equal to underscore html so we'll uh, add the object underscore html is going to be this control x control v and this should work now so it says dangerously set in our html is not like it expected it so uh, underscore underscore html should be the markup okay so it should be underscore underscore html instead of underscore html and yeah it is being rendered now so let's remove the slug i want to remove this the slug from here and this is how you create a blog using html css javascript and AppRite. so you can keep on adding more blogs by going to AppRite cloud and uh, you can use different functionalities of AppRite. you can also create a storage you can use a lot of other features that are available in AppRite. so let me know in the comment section how you like this video i have updated the title and description as well uh, so the title and meta description has been updated so that our website looks good you can go ahead and make more pages like about services contact and use different features of AppRite. thank you so much guys for watching this video and i will see you next time